Hi everyone, it's great to have you back here. I'm really excited about this episode, as we're going to explore and experiment with our drawing tools while working on the flyer design together. So if you're ready, let's dive right in. Before we get started with the design process, let's create a backstory for our design. Today we're working on a flyer design for a lively and youthful cafe. We want to convey an energetic vibe, so our call to action will reflect that spirit. To add some dynamism to the flyer, we'll incorporate flying bakeries and stars. As for the colors, we'll stick to our usual palette to complement the concept we have chosen. Now that we have a clear concept in mind, let's move on to complete the design. First, we'll explore the text tool before jumping into the drawing tools. You can access the text tool by selecting T from the toolbar or pressing T on your keyboard. Flyers usually need a compelling call to action, so let's invite our customers to indulge themselves. When you select the text tool, you will see a content aware menu in the style tab. Here you can choose the font, type, size, and the other text formats. Additionally, you have options for kerning, tracking, and line height. Let's take a look at the three icons controlling the bundling box behaviors. Auto width expands the box automatically, with more text, while auto height does the same vertically. On the other hand, fixed width maintains the box size regardless of the text length. You can also adjust the size manually. To add some motion to the text, we will draw a simple circle and use the text on a path tool. Select both the text and the circle, then hit the text on a path button. This gives the text a nice curved look, tying all the elements together. With our call to action set, it's time to move on to the main focus of this episode, the drawing tools. First up is the pen tool. You can access it by clicking on the pen icon in the toolbar or pressing P on your keyboard. The pen tool is perfect for achieving precise outcomes. Let's start with this slice of cake. By clicking on this corner, a single node appears on the canvas. Click again and the path is created. Keep tracing the shape until you return to the first node and with one final click, the pad is closed. You can then customize the fit color, stroke width, and toggle them on or off according to your preferences. In this case, I will use this color from the same palette and have both fill and stroke enabled. Not all pads need to be closed. In certain cases, like this example, a pad can be a single stroke. To achieve this, follow the same process as before, but to close the pad, double click on the node or select the check mark from the menu above. We covered node types in our previous episode, so it's worth checking that out. Now let's add the inner layer of the cake. As you can see, this pad is different from the previous one. To create the curve pads, we will need to use the handles that come with the pen tool. Here's a handle trick. Look for the highest and lowest point of the curve and add a node right there. Click on the peak of the pad and drag your mouse horizontally and continue doing the same along the pad to create the desired curve. Once you got it, close the pad with a single node. Nice job. Now let's make a duplicate of this shape and mirror it both horizontally and vertically to create a symmetrical look. Make small adjustments here and there to get it just right. Now that we're done with the pen tool, let's move on to brush tool. Click on the brush icon from the toolbar or press B on your keyboard. When you select the brush tool, a slider pops up, allowing you to adjust the stroke width. Now let's head over to the style tab and explore the brush menu. In the brush menu, you will find the option to switch between a regular pad and the brush pad which is great for experimenting with different styles. Clicking on the menu next to it reveals your save brushes on top and preset brushes below. These preset brushes can be used to create new customized brushes. To do so, click on the three dot icon and the brush menu will appear. I use this brush to draw the details of the cookies. Now let's see what we can do to customize it into a brand new brush. Any changes made here will be reflected on the selected path. So keep an eye on the canvas. The circle on top can control both roundness and angle. For more precise approach, you can use the sliders. Below we have the minimum width. This tool comes in handy when you want to avoid distorted shapes. In order to see the difference with this feature, let's edit our brush into a more dynamic shape. First we can easily start with moving nodes around. And if you like to give it a rounder look, then add an extra node by clicking on the curve. Now minimum width function is way more visible. Okay, with that, it's safe to say we're done with the brush tool. 
Now, let's move on to our last drawing tool, the pencil. You can access it by clicking on the pencil icon or pressing P on your keyboard. Similar to the brush tool, the pencil tool is freehand and functions in a similar way. Looking at the design of the croissant, I think the pencil tool is the best tool to be used here. As soon as you activate the pencil tool, a smoothing slider and stroke width options appear. These allow you to set the settings beforehand, but you can always change them later by clicking on the pad. Let's start with the zero smoothing and simply trace the pad. Looking at my reference, I realize that pad isn't as smooth as I want it to be. When I click on the pad with the node tool selected, it shows why. When using zero smoothing, you have more freedom, but drawing a frictionless pad can be challenging. Increasing the smoothness will save you time and reduce the number of nodes. Remember, using fewer nodes is a golden rule in vector design for achieving a professional look. There are three ways to achieve this. Increasing smoothing, deleting nodes, which we covered recently, or individually deleting nodes. Although I don't recommend the latter to save time. Let's tweak the nodes a bit and adjust the stroke width. All right, guys, we're done. Next up, you guessed it, we'll take our design to the world. Here's our design printed and ready to be distributed. Even though we are only on episode five, the tools we've learned so far offer endless possibilities. I encourage you to try them all and share your results with us. And with that, we are done with this episode. See you in the next one, where we'll dive into shaping tools. Bye for now.